If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last. Sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. And we're back with part two of this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are tuning in from part one, welcome back. Uh, if you haven't seen part one of the podcast yet, uh, there'll be an annotation at the end of the vid... Uh, there'll be an annotation at the uh, end of the video, so you can actually go back and watch that on what I've been reporting on over the course of the last week. So anyway, here we go. Um, part two now. This is what we've got. Nintendo Switch sales reach new heights as the president retires. Nintendo today reported earnings for the last fiscal year, and there was a few big pieces of news to share. First off, the Nintendo Switch has now sold 17.79 million units worldwide as of March 31st, with some 68.97 million software units shipped for the same period. Nintendo added that it predicts it will sell more than 20 million Switch units this fiscal year, and 100 million games for the same period. That's a lot. And it speaks to Nintendo's strong ambition for the year, which makes sense given a new Smash Bros. game is on the way. Additionally, Nintendo announced that President Tatsumi Kimishima, who took over from Sat Satoru Iwata, rest in peace Iwata-san, after his passing, will retire on June 28th, just after E3. Replacing him is Shuntaro Furukawa, who previously held high-level titles across the marketing and corporate planning, among other things. Just 46, just 46 years old, Furukawa joined Nintendo in 1994. Current Nintendo of Europe president, Satoru Shibata, said has also stepped down from his role to take a senior position at Nintendo headquarters in Japan. No replacement has been announced. In 2012, Furukawa became outside director for the Pokemon Company, which Nintendo has a stake in but does not own. In July 2015, he became the general manager of corporate planning, and in June 2016, he became a director, managing executive officer, and supervisor of corporate analysis and administration in September 2016. Furukawa was put in charge of Nintendo's global marketing team. Going back to the earning with earnings reports. Nintendo said it shipped a total of 15.05 million Switch units during the fiscal year ending March 31st. Over that period, Super Mario Odyssey moved 10.41 million units, while Mario Kart 8 Deluxe shifted 9.22 copies. Splatoon 2 shipped 6.02 million copies during the fiscal year, including games from other publishers. The Switch has 12 games that have sold more than 1 million units. The 3DS stayed solid for Nintendo during the, during, the, uh, during the country, despite its age and going up against the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo said it sold 6.4 million units during the fiscal year, with Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon shipping 7.51 million units for the year. Life to date, the Nintendo 3DS has sold 72.53 million units, with some 364.89 million games sold. Also in the report, Nintendo said digital sales were really good, specifically for Nintendo Switch. Digital sales on Switch made up 60.8 billion yen, rising 87% year over year. Another bright spot for Nintendo was the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, which Nintendo said proved to be a hit in every region for the fiscal year. The SNES Classic sold 5.28 million units. Additionally, Amiibo sales improved during the fiscal year, with 10.3 million physical figures sold and 5.8 million cards. In terms of Nintendo's smartphone business, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp shipped this fiscal year, and, and it, combined with Super Mario Run and Fire Emblem Heroes, helped smart devices and IP-related income hit 39.4 billion yen. 
which is up 62% year over year. Overall, Nintendo's sales for the fiscal year ended March 31st came out to 1.05 trillion yen, up sharply from last year. Addis additionally, operating profit was 177.5 billion yen, which was also a significant increase from last year. Consumers have been very receptive to the new concept introduced by the Nintendo Switch as a home gaming system that they can take with them to play anytime, anywhere, with anyone, which helps it maintain its favorable, men men bleh bleh. favorable momentum during this fiscal year. Nintendo said, looking ahead, we plan to leverage this momentum to reach an even broader range of consumers and expand the installed base of the hardware. So let's go to currency converter, shall we? Japanese yen. I'm going to convert that to US dollar. So let's see what we had. Uh, 1.05 million billion trillion. Hmm. And that equates to right. um, hundred hundred thousand oh, hang on thousand million billion nine hundred and sixty one oh my what that's an ex that's an astronomical figure 160, uh, 961,939,000,000, US dollars. Good grief! And that's at time of recording. Now, for the profit. Hang on. Right. Thousand million billion. Yeah. So that uh oh, that's still quite a sizable amount. So the overall profit in US dollars is hang on. One billion six hundred and twenty six million one thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars and sixty five cents. That's quite a sizable amount. That is a very sizable amount. And I'm not just saying that, that is actually a very sizable amount. Now, let's see. Sea of Thieves is Rare's fastest selling game of all time now. Well, it has been confirmed that Xbox exclusive Sea of Thieves is Rare's fastest selling game of all time. This new info came to light because of tracking firm the NPD Group. According to them, Sea of Thieves sold faster through the first month of sale than any rare game since NPD had started tracking video game sales. Sea of Thieves was the second biggest selling game of March and, it's, and is the eighth best selling game of 2018 year to date. NPD analyst, NPD analyst Matt Piscatella wrote, Sea of Thieves generated the highest launch month sales for any title produced by developer Rare since tracking by N the NPD group began in 1995. These figures include those who either bought a physical or digitally physical copy or digitally downloaded the game. It does not include those who downloaded it through Microsoft's Game Pass program. 
That's probably because you never actually own the game and rather you just rent it from Microsoft. Uh, fair play. Don't forget to check out our latest uh, da, 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 in, in, our initial impressions of the Game Pass program. I actually like the Game Pass program. So, in terms of 2018 game sales, Sea of Thieves comes at it comes in at a respectable eighth on that list. You can also read uh, da, 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 the top ten at the moment as it stands is as follows. Number, uh, number 10, Mario Kart 8. Number 9, MLB 18 The Show. Number 8, Sea of Thieves. Number 7, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Number 6, NBA 2K18. Number 5, Grand Theft Auto 5. That's still in the top 5? Wow! Number 4, Call of Duty World War 2. How dare you beat out a much superior game. Number 3, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, number 2, Monster Hunter World. And number 1, Far Cry. Six out of the ten games are cross-platform, with a much larger player base than an exclusive game would have. To be honest, I'm getting quite sick of seeing Grand Theft Auto V in top ten lists. Rockstar doesn't even have to try and add single-player content, because the play people still swarm to the online multiplayer like moths to a flame. Well, and it's easy to see why. Right, now, let's get riggedy riggedy rigged soon! Because Rick and Morty fans and PlayStation VR owners, we have a treat for you. Adult Swim has officially released the retail version and collector's edition of the VR game Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality. And it's bundled with all sorts of goodies. If you're a die-hard fan, you can go and pick up the Collector's Edition, which includes a weaponized Rick Funko Pop vinyl figure, the game, a double-sided comic book cover, which parodies the critically game, acclaimed game The Last of Us. It just, it just hit me that there's an odd similarity between Joel and Ellie and Rick and Morty. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Wow. The Collector's Edition will set you back $50, but if you just want a regular boxed copy, it'll cost you $30. For those unaware, Rick and Morty Virtual Rickality is a VR adventure game that places you inside the insane and imaginative world that series creators Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon have thrust upon all of us. Players will find themselves getting all going to all sorts of weird and fantastical places, as well as being able to explore Rick's iconic garage where there's no shortage of references and easter eggs for fans. PLEASE HAVE PICKLE RICK! PLEASE! This isn't one of those tech demo -y games either. This is a full-fledged experience with puzzle solving, gun battles, and all sorts of other VR shenanigans. Virtual Rickality also features the voice cast from the popular animated adult show reprising their roles. This means the real, genuine Mick Rick will be an asshole right in your face! We've truly peaked in gaming. And you can watch the game's launch trailer below. So, let's make a couple of tweaks. And, three, two, one. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, let's see what we have. Let's go. Hey you! Are you tired of the same old boring reality day in and day out? Well now you can strap this box to your face and experience the lives of your favorite Rick and Morty characters! <laughs> it's got throwing things! Whoa, 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 what is this, Rick? It looks like some sort of crazy video game about us or something. It's not just a video game, Morty. It's a virtual reality game. I sold our likenesses to some video game publisher for a lot of money, Morty, and I made made a whole virtual reality game, and it's gonna it's it's got all kinds of great things about it, Morty. Uh, I don't understand, Rick. I mean, like, like I don't know if I like this, you know. I don't care if you like it, Morty, because it's a VR game. It's it's the hottest new trend, Morty. It's the hottest new future of entertainment, Morty. Yeah, I don't know, Rick. Come on, look at these features, Morty. It doesn't get much better than this, Morty. Well, at least this part looks kind of fun, I guess. Look look, look at those guys explode. <laughs> like what else can what else do you actually do in this game? You might be asking yourself, what else does this game have to offer? <laughs> well, we, it's got one of these things in it. And you can do this. You you you, you it looks like a gimmick, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, who's gonna play this? Who's gonna play this? Oh my god! <laughs> oh! <laughs> you, you killed it. I mean, me. I mean, I. You'll never understand its majesty. VR for everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Here, 
I'll say this. If I get PSVR, I'm getting this game because this looks up. Oh, this looks freaking amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Woo wee. Right, and podcast set up. Excellent. Wow. Oh, I'm going to need to. Alright, so anyway, let's read about this. Sony Mania Plus arrives in July, but its beautiful new trailer is here now. Sonic Mania Plus, the expanded edition of last year's retro-style platformer, will launch on July 18th, Sega announced. I'm pretty sure it said July 17th in the trailer I saw yesterday. Anyway, alongside the release date for Nintendo Switch, PS4, Windows PC, and Xbox One game, the company released a very good new trailer that features some very good new animation from everyone's favourite guy, Tyson Hees. Tyson Hess, or however you pronounce it. You'll remember Hess as the artist behind the original Sonic Mania's most memorable trailer, which revamped Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles to look far more anime than we've seen them in years past. Hess has since continued to illustrate the characters for short films and comic book covers to our delight, and it's wonderful! <laughs> The Sonic Mania Plus trailer marks the animated debut of two other characters, Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. Though these old school guys are Sonic's friends from way back in 1993, they premiered in Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, the arcade on an arcade only Sonic the Hedgehog game, while Sega previously announced that they'd be playable in Sonic Mania Plus. This is the first time we've seen them in action in several years. Ray the Flying Squirrel hasn't been in a Sonic game for more than a cameo since his debut, in fact. Sonic Mania Plus will also have a new features like updated time trials and an on-call mode that changes up level layouts. People who already own so the original Sonic Mania can buy the on-call mode separately for $4.99. Here. There we go. Let's go. Rated E for everyone. Hello? Huh. Oh, hello? This? Nice. <laughs> Sonic game ever recorded to GameSpot. It's Sonic Mania Plus. <laughs> A new 2D adventure. <laughs> Why am I making my voice sound so over the top? New zones and reimagined classics. The new characters. Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. <laughs> I think we just saw the stomp there, reminiscent of Sonic Generations. Play with up to four friends! Happy! <laughs> that! That pretty much sells it! That sells it for me! <laughs> I'm in the mood to play Sonic Mania now. Yes, I've got it, guys. July, was it? Yeah, July 17th. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Hang on. Yeah, see? July 17th. Not July 18th. But I mean, look what, it, look what you get with it. Game with holographic package. 
Sega Genesis reversible cover, 32 page art book. I'm sold. And one last one here. It is Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. And according to the title, it is a dream for the Harry Potter obsessed. And much better. So, let's see what we have. It's the official launch trailer. It's an RPG that seems to understand what makes Harry Potter great. Here we go. Congratulations. We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Sounds like we got Maggie Smith doing Professor McGonagall. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Even the music from the Harry Potter films in the trailer! Nice! Take my money! Familiar characters? Are we actually going to get cameos from the uh, Harry Potter character? From the Harry Potter universe? Well, the familiar characters would be the teachers, but... But it's the little time of getting new characters. There we go! And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm actually going to show you some of this gameplay. Like, see, there we go. So, so what I might actually need to do is I might need to take this a little bit easy. Right. So what I'm going to I'm actually going to need to. Um, Right, so I'm going to need to... Oh, right. Uh, that's my Pokemon message thing. Don't worry about that. Ah, blast. Right. So this is some of the gameplay here. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can obviously read the text there. I mean, if you can't, then I apologize. I mean, I'm, I'm having to use... I'm having to use my desktop screen so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, let's go here, and then, not now, oh, last, hang on, uh, then we do, oh, hang on, what about, how do you, oh, what about, hang on, trust me folks, this is not as easy as it looks. What I might need to do is I might need to do I might need to do um uh, okay, I'll need to do this. Ah, that's better. Now I can actually see what I'm doing. Right, so what we do here, care for the broom there. Yeah, let's see. I'll actually do. Let's turn it up. Let's get some. Uh... That's the first one. Um, let's see what I go for. Let's go for that. 
a nice coat of polish will make a big improvement. Oh, wait, wait, no, we'll do that. Oh, need to put. Ah, lost. And that's as much as I can get at the moment. Right, that's as much as I can get at the moment, uh, folks. But, uh, I mean, as you saw there, the energy does get used up quite quickly. So unless you manage to upgrade your energy, it's, uh, it's going to feel like a bit of a grind to begin with. But uh, you'll get there eventually. But anyway, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery is built upon a nearly impossible promise. Allowing people to finally attend Hogwarts. I'm 25 years old and I've waited 14 years for this. In the same way when Pokemon Go came out back in 2016. From the moment I turned 10, I waited 13 years. Wow. Right. Hogwarts Mystery is a mobile RPG for iOS and Android developed by Jan City in partnership with Warner Bros. The Harry Potter dedicated port key games label, the game... Harry Potter dedicated port game... Harry Potter... Uh, by, with Warner Bros. Harry Potter dedicated port key games label. Uh, the game has taken place... The game takes place over seven years, encouraging players to take advantage of life at Hogwarts. There are classes to attend, Quidditch matches to play, students to deal with, and as the game progresses, crushes to romance. Ooh! There's a storyline woven into the game's core, but the heart of Hogwarts mystery is the freedom in exploring the castle. The game takes place seven years before Harry Potter heads to Hogwarts, just after the death of his parents. Parents. While Voldemort is in hiding, no meaning there's no boys who lived to encounter either. I've never tried. I've never tried to hide how important Harry Potter is to me. This is based on the um, Polygon, the person who wrote the Polygon article, Julia Alexander from Polygon, who provided for writing the article. I've never tried to hide how important Harry Potter is to me. I wore my Slytherin off-brand Doc Martens to the play to the play session, sporting two different Harry Potter pins on my jacket that I wear everywhere. I even tried to convince editors at Polygon to let me write a column called Dum Dumblore. Get it? <laughs> Where I talk about different and important events in Harry Potter history. All of which is to say that I was holding the game to pretty high standards. I started my demo session in Diagon Alley, walking through the streets and picking up school supplies for my witch's first year at Hogwarts. There are a few words to explain the level of immense joy and relief that filled my heart upon walking into stores like Flourish and Blots and Ollivanders. Everything that felt exactly as I remembered. It's hard to pay attention to the actions the game is prompting you to perform when you're looking around at the different shops, taking it all in again. In Ollivanders, my witch was given a couple of different ones to try out. Each one required me to slide my finger across the iPad in a different motion. Then I answered questions about my personality, which in turn helped me find the right one. Like any RPG, the decisions I make, including answering basic questions about how I'd react in a specific scenario, influence my character's strengths throughout the game. I'm, in, I'm a Slytherin at heart, and having completed most of which Hogwarts house do you belong in quizzes on the internet, I knew what answers to give. The best part about Hogwarts Mystery is that you can play it however you want. The questions enough are easy to gain. The questions enough are questions enough are easy to gain to ensure you get placed in your favorite house but you can also play it honestly and see where the game takes you but Diagon Alley is just a tease of what the game has to offer it helps introduce the game's simple mechanics your character's storyline and even a loyal friend 
It wasn't until I reached Hogwarts that I truly felt the game come to life. Everything from the Great Hall where I was sorted into Slytherin. Remember? Remember what I said about the gaming? Remember what I said about gaming the questions to your advantage? To my first classes, Charles and Professor Flitwick and potions with Professor Snape felt magical. Although the game employs the original voice actors' talents, including Michael Gambon as Dumbledore and Warwick Davis as Flitwick, the writing remains the most impressive facet. It's important that a game like Hogwarts Mystery, which uses some of Harry Potter's most popular characters, gets their stature just right. As a particularly big fan of Professor Snape, I was anxious the game would mess him up somehow. I was worried his elegant sarcasm and biting wit would be lost. His abrasive tone and charming apathy disregarded. Instead, I found myself pleasantly surprised by how true to the original character this version of Snape appeared. Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery has the unenviable task of trying to appease Harry Potter fans and we're a stubborn, impish, hard-to-please bunch. Certain aspects of the universe have to be just so. The game never pretends. It comes across as a game designed by Harry Potter fans who always wanted to go to Hogwarts for equally hopeful Harry Potter aficionados. The, the adoration the team has for the characters, the castle, and the general wizarding world is palpable. That same respect the writing team paid to characters like Severus Snape can also be seen in other important canonical figures. Again, considering the game takes place seven years before Harry's official start, don't expect to run into Draco Malfoy, Ron Weasley, or Hermione Granger. Other characters like Nymphadora Tonks, Charlie Weasley, and Bill Weasley do make an appearance. I didn't get to interact with Charlie or Tonks in this preview, but I faced off against Bill in a dueling session just outside the Quidditch pitch. Dueling operates like a Pokemon battle style minigame. Players are given health bars and a variety of spells to either defend or attack with. The order of attack is decided by a game of rock, paper, scissors. Players continue to attack until one wizard or witch's flaunt wand goes flying. It's not one of the most it's not one of the most interesting parts of the game, but people looking to acquire additional coins or XP points to purchase aesthetic items and become more powerful will enjoy the distraction. Perhaps the most important Hogwarts mystery characteristic that can't go unsaid is how little gameplay I actually encountered. I spend most of my time talking to friends, learning about my family's troubled past, and listening to my teachers. It's the perfect game for someone who, like me, for someone like me who finds the most interesting parts of Harry Potter, the relationships, the drama, and the drama that builds. This isn't the type of game where players will be asked to consistently engage with an action, prepare to read and read and read some more. I was so engrossed with the story I was navigating that the characters I was meaning, meeting and learning from my professors that the fact I didn't particularly do many actionable things never bothered me. Hogwarts, uh, Harry Potter Hogwarts mystery made me feel like a Hogwarts student for a brief period. I managed to upset Professor, Professor Snape Charm Professor Flitwick, oh, I see what she did, they're very clever, into declaring me one of the brightest witches he's ever taught. Same thing happened to me yesterday when I got the game. Managed some mischief and even made an enemy. I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Mischief mastered. I invested in my witch, a Hogwarts student who, want, who I wanted to become the powerful leader she was destined to be. I didn't think that Hogwarts Mystery would keep my attention, but by the end of the session, I was disappointed to hand the, the iPad back. Aww. I can't wait to dive into Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery again and spend the next seven years at Hogwarts. The trepidations I had that this would be just another Harry Potter game aren't there anymore. Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery is available now for iOS and Android devices. Well, take my money. Yes, it has in-app purchases, but it's a free-to-play game, so that's to be expected.
Now, on to now on to see the battle of as they now. Uh, Microsoft are 3-1 up heading into May 2018 as we look at this month's Battle of the Free Games. <laughs> And as Microsoft won last month, they get the advantage of going first. So here we go. April showers bring May flowers. Or so the saying goes. Either way, April is on its way out and May is the new top dog in town. Beckoning warmly to us as it paves the way towards summertime. As always, a new month means a new month of free Xbox One and Xbox 360 games. So, let's get right into them. So what do we have here? Uh, we have got Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, available from May 16th to June 15th. Super Mega Baseball 2, available from May 1st to May 31st, actually. Hang on. Is this actually a new release? Is this actually going to be a new release? Oh my goodness me it is! So I'm getting a free... So I'm getting a free game that's actually got a release date on May 1st! Fantastic! Xbox 360 games, both games are backwards compatible on Xbox One. Sega Vintage Collection Streets of Rage. Available from May 1st and Vanquish from May 16th. Well, Metal Gear Solid 5, Streets of Rage, and a yet to be released game. Sony, what do you have? Let's see what they've got. Ah, Beyond Two Souls, that's a big one. Uh, Rayman Legends on the PSP. They've got Risen 3, Titan Lords, and EAT THEM! EAT THEM! EAT THEM! King Oddball and Furmans on the PS Vita. Hmm. Interesting choices. I mean, Beyond Two Souls and Rayman... I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Microsoft take this month again. It's 4-1 now to Microsoft. I mean, the only month Sony had was, I believe, February or March, when uh, they had Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank. Anyway. Anyway, time for the final parts of the show, and it goes a little something like... Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting, points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. <laughs> so, today, in honor of Super Robot Wars X coming out on PlayStation 4 in the Asia region, hopefully they, hopefully they bring it worldwide. Anyway, so here we go. We are going to be going through the rare trophies of... We're going to be going through the rare trophies of... Super Robot Wars X. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna have that many trophies to cover because it's the. It's just the um, very rare and ultra rare trophies. So anyway, here we go. Right, and this is according to um, their rarity on PSN. Right, so we've got a very rare. We've got a bronze trophy rooting the enemy. Any enemy pilot gains 50 morale. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Uh, then we've got... Uh, well, 9.6 gamers have unlocked that one. Uh, emblem collector. Collect all five emblems. 14.5% of gamers have unlocked that gold trophy. Another gold trophy is SR point hoarder. Obtain 51 SR points. 13.3% have unlocked that one. Uh... We'll say back into single digits. Uh, vault Master brought all power parts, excluding recommended, from the vault and upgraded magic customization to grade 6. 8.9% of gamers have achieved that trophy. 
Overseer of two stories, view endings for both male and female protagonists. So essentially you're going to need to play the game twice by the looks of things. 7.1% have unlocked that one. And then the elusive platinum trophy entitled X Master. 3.2% have unlocked the platinum trophy according to PlayStation Network. So... That is it for the Trophy Achievement Podcast uh, this week. I had to split it into two pods, given uh, given how much uh, news I covered this week. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptised into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the notification squad, the Latter-day Saints notification squad. Turn on, all don't, blah, turn on all notifications so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. On the left, I've got part one of the podcast, which was up uh, earlier this evening. And on the right, you've got my dedicated Trophy Achievement podcast playlist. Not very often I split my podcast into two parts, but like I said, with the amount of stuff that I covered in, in news, can you blame me? Anyway, that is it, folks, and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Um, I'll see you guys on Saturday for some more Tom and Jerry sins, and it's getting interesting here because we went into triple figures for the first time in this series last week. Will we be able to repeat that this week? Only time will tell. Anyway, I'll see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day, peace out, and stay faithful.